Hello, my name is Dr. Lucas Cusimano, and I'm an interventional radiologist here at UCLA. Today I'll be discussing a minimally invasive treatment option for painful knee osteoarthritis called geniculate nerve ablation. Knee osteoarthritis is a painful disabling condition affecting approximately 9.3 million U.S. adults. Symptoms most commonly develop in individuals in their 60s and 70s. Treatment for painful knee osteoarthritis ranges on a spectrum from non-invasive lifestyle modifications to total joint replacements. Many of these less invasive treatment options have mixed effectiveness, and there's a large need from patients with refractory symptoms or patients unable or unwilling to undergo joint replacement. In the UCLA Interventional Radiology Department, we perform two procedures to fill this treatment gap, geniculate nerve ablation and geniculate artery embolization. Both these procedures can be very effective in the right patients. Today, I'll be discussing geniculate nerve ablation. Our workup for geniculate nerve ablation and geniculate artery embolization begins with a clinic visit. We may perform imaging during that visit to evaluate your knee osteoarthritis or rule out other etiologies of knee pain. We'll also discuss alternative treatment options to help ensure the best treatment is selected. There are several motor and sensory nerves innervating the knee. Three sensory nerves are the targets of geniculate nerve ablation, the superior lateral, superior medial, and inferior medial geniculate nerves. We may also target the nerves above the patella in some cases. Prior to bringing patients for geniculate nerve ablation, we first perform a nerve block. During our nerve block, we place small needles in the region of each of our geniculate nerve targets. We then typically inject a local anesthetic and steroid. We have a follow-up visit approximately one week after the nerve block. At that visit, we will assess your pain response. If there's at least a 50% reduction in your knee pain following the nerve block, we'll then schedule you for your geniculate nerve ablation. During the geniculate nerve ablation, probes are placed at each target site. Sensory testing may be performed to confirm there is no involvement of motor nerves. Once we are happy with our position, the ablation is started and takes approximately 90 seconds to complete. Probes are removed and patients are discharged home after a short recovery. So how are the results of geniculate nerve ablation? Well, this is a recent randomized double-blind sham control trial. There were two groups in this study, one of which underwent geniculate nerve ablation and a control or sham group in which ablation needles were placed, but there was no activation of the ablation generator. At each of the time points of this study, there were a significantly higher proportion of responders in the geniculate nerve ablation group. At six months, 76.5% of patients responded to treatment. These findings suggest that geniculate nerve ablation offers significant pain relief and surpasses the effects attributable to a placebo. Here are the results of a systematic review, including 453 patients. At six months, 65% of patients had clinical success defined as at least 50% pain relief. The authors calculated that geniculate nerve ablation had a 4.5 times higher probability of success compared to intraarticular steroid injection, and a 1.8 times higher probability of success compared to HLA injection. Importantly, there were no serious procedural-related adverse events reported in any of the patients. We consider patients for geniculate nerve ablation if they fail conservative treatment, are not candidates for other minimally invasive procedures, or wish to avoid or defer surgery. There are several advantages of geniculate nerve ablation. It's an outpatient procedure, not requiring admission into a hospital. Minimal pain is associated with the procedure and typically only requires local anesthesia and a small amount of conscious sedation. The recovery from this procedure is rapid and the safety profile is very good. There are a few limitations of geniculate nerve ablation. Not every patient will improve after the procedure as procedure outcomes depend on degree of pain and degree of osteoarthritis. Underlying degenerative changes from knee osteoarthritis are not treated with this procedure and pain symptoms may reoccur for some patients. Lastly, symptom improvement likely is not as durable as other treatments such as knee joint replacement 
or genicular artery embolization. In conclusion, geniculate nerve ablation is a minimally invasive procedure that is both effective and safe for the treatment of knee pain associated with osteoarthritis. However, it may not be right for every patient, and we aim to offer a multidisciplinary approach at UCLA to offer the best treatment options. If you have any additional questions or like further information, please call our UCLA Interventional Radiology Clinic or feel free to email me directly at the email on the screen. Thank you very much.